Hello boys and girls, it's Mr. Wasserman, and today we are beginning a new unit that's going to focus primarily on fractions, hence the title fractions in the name of this home links, decomposing fractions. We are in our home links book, unit 5, lesson 1. And before we get started, I don't know if you've ever taken notice uh, of the family note that is sometimes put at the top of your homework assignments. These give explanations about what we did in class. The family note reads, In class today, your child learned to decompose fractions into smaller parts. For example, 5, 6 can be decomposed into 1, 6 plus 1, 6 plus 1, 6 plus 1, 6 plus 1, 6, or 2, 6 plus 3, 6, or 1, 6 plus 4, 6, and so on. Okay, That family note gives a brief explanation, a brief uh, summary of what we've learned so far. And of course, homework is just a review of concepts that we've already learned in class. So, when you are given the task to complete the name collection boxes using equations for a fraction like 11 fifths, this isn't new territory, this is review. Although... You're probably thinking to yourself, 11 fifths, how can there be a fraction that has 11 fifths? Aren't usually the numerators smaller than the denominators? Well, sometimes when we're thinking about fractions, that's true. But oftentimes, when we think about parts of a whole, sometimes we have more parts than equals one whole. I'll give you uh, an example of that. The most common way we come into contact with uh, improper fractions or amounts that are more than one whole is when we deal with money uh, that deals with dollars and cents, like this amount, a dollar seventy-five. Okay, a dollar seventy-five is more than one, but less than two dollars. Now, you and I both know a quarter is worth one fourth of a dollar. Okay. So if I have four fourths, that gives me one whole. One plus one plus one plus one gives me four fourths. Okay, so this amount represents the one dollar. So one dollar is the same as four quarters. Well, up here though, we have more than four quarters. We actually have 75 cents. And 75 cents can be represented by three quarters. One fourth plus one fourth plus one fourth. So the 75 cents of the amount $1.75 can be represented by three quarters, okay? Or three fourths. So when I have a dollar seventy-five, what I really have is four fourths of a dollar and three fourths of a dollar. And what is four plus three? Well, four fourths plus three fourths gives us a total of seven fourths. Ah, that fraction is improper. Well, it's not really improper in the uh, in the sense that it's wrong. It's just that the numerator is now bigger than the denominator, meaning that there are more parts uh, to to uh, this fraction than can fit into one whole. So if I had seven quarters in my pocket, that means I have more than one dollar's worth of money. That's all there is to it. So we go back to this fraction box, uh, or this name collection box that has a fraction in it. I see that I have 11 fifths. So I'm just going to ignore the fifths part for just a moment. And just going to concentrate on the 11. What are some ways I can add two numbers together uh, to get to 11? Well, the simplest way I can think of is 10 plus 1, or 1 plus 10, depending on the order. 10 plus 1 gives me 11, right? So 10 fifths plus 1 fifth is going to give me a total of 11 fifths. 10 plus a 1 is 11. 
So that's one way I could uh, uh, rename 11 fifths. Okay. Now I could continue this pattern by uh, reducing the numerator of one fraction and increasing the numerator of the second fraction. So instead of 10 fifths, 10 minus 1 is 9. 9 and 1 more than 1 is 2. So 9 plus 2 gives me 11. So again, 9 fifths plus 2 fifths equals 11 fifths. Okay. I could also create an equation that has multiple add-ins like we see in the family note. So instead of 10 plus 1 or 9 plus 2, let's do 3 plus 4 plus 4. 3 plus 4 is 7. 7 plus 4 is 11. So I have three add-ins. 3 fifths plus 4 fifths would give me 7 fifths. 7 fifths plus 4 more fifths would give me 11 fifths. 3 plus 4 plus 4 gives me 11 fifths. Now, just as a reminder, when we're adding fractions, we never add the bottom number. We never add the denominator. So 3 fifths plus 4 fifths would not give me 7 tenths. Okay? Uh, we're thinking about one particular item here. So apples. Three apples plus four apples gives me seven apples. Seven apples plus four apples gives me eleven apples. We don't suddenly find ourselves with a bunch of bananas when we add three plus four plus four. Okay? So the denominator will not change uh, when you're adding the add-ins uh, in the numerators together. So three fifths plus four fifths plus four fifths gives me eleven fifths. The denominator does not change. Okay. Another way we could uh, decompose this fraction or give it a different name is creating a subtraction problem. Now this is the, uh, the advanced level here. But 11 is another way of saying 12 minus 1. So if I started out with 12 fifths, and I took away one fifth, that would leave me with eleven fifths. So I could come up with subtraction problems too. I'll leave you to come up with one more example on your own. And that's how we would approach eleven fifths. Now, number two, we have a mixed number. A mixed number is like an improper fraction in the sense that it represents an amount that is not quite a, a, a full amount of holes, but it has a whole amount and a fractional amount. Just like our example at $1.75. $1.75 has a whole dollar amount, the 1, and it has a fractional amount, the 75 cents. So 1 and 3 eighths can be uh, broken down into a number of ways. So one way I can think about it is 1 whole plus the 3 eighths. I can also think about 1 and 3 eighths as 1 plus 1 eighth plus 2 eighths. Like so. 1 plus 2 gives me 3 eighths. Okay? So, when I have 1 and 3 eighths, I could think about it as 1 whole, and then the 3 eighths broken down into 1 eighth and 2 eighths. Now, another way to think about 1 and 3 eighths is to convert it into an improper fraction. Okay, So what is 1 whole? Well, in the context of eighths, uh, 1 whole can be represented as 8 eighths. If I were to cut something into 8 parts, and I kept all 8 parts, like when I get a pizza delivered to my house and it's cut into 8 slices, and before anyone digs into that pizza, there will be 8 eighths or 8 slices to that whole pizza. Okay, so if I have 8 eighths, I could then add my fractional part of my mixed number, which would be 3 eighths. 
is 8 plus 3 gives me 11 eighths. Or, if I think about 8 eighths as a whole number, 8 eighths plus 3 eighths gives me 1 and 3 eighths. Like so. So you can deconstruct or decompose 1 and 3 eighths in a number of ways. Okay? I am confident that you will be able to come up with more examples for these name collection boxes and will be able to create some graphics that help us uh, demonstrate how 8 twelfths can be broken up into uh, a number sentence for problem number 3. This looks just like uh, what we did in our math journal assignment. Okay. Finally, we have some multiplication problems down in the practice. We just got done with some large digit multiplication in Unit 4, so let's take a look at one of those problems. Let's try 644 times 4, and I think I'm going to use my uh, lattice approach. That was the last approach we learned about in Unit 4. So, of course, lattice uses a setup similar to partitioning rectangles, except it has these diagonal columns, which gives it the lattice name. And I'm going to multiply one of the factors, 644, times the other factor, 4. And we're going to ignore the place values of each of the digits in 644 for just a moment as we just do the single digit calculation. So 4 times 4 gives us 16. 4 times 4 again gives us 16. And then 6 times 4 gives us 24. Okay, so now we have to add the diagonal columns together. So I'm just going to bring down my 6 for my 1s. 6 plus 1 is going to give me 7. Those are my 10s. 1 plus 4 is going to give me 5. Those are my hundreds. And then I'm just going to bring down my 2. 2 represents the thousands. So my total here is 2,576. That's my product. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, I am, I'm not quite sure if that's right. You can spot check your work really quickly by thinking about 644 as a rounded number, okay? If I round down to 600, 600 times 4 would just be 6 times 4 with a couple of extra zeros. So 6 with two zeros times 4 would give me 24 with two zeros, otherwise known as 2,400. And that's pretty close to our actual answer here. So I can confirm that my my actual answer is in the right ballpark by creating a quick estimation. Now, I did that in re the reverse order that what we usually do. But uh, we've already done a lot of calculations with large digit uh, multiplication problems, so this is old hat for you by now. Lots of new concepts in our uh, exploration of fractions uh, and some older concepts that still are a little tricky for some of you. So in any event, if you have questions or if you're still not sure about what to do, talk to your math teachers. They are here to help you uh, through all of this. So ask your questions. Don't be afraid. So until we meet again, friends, uh, good luck, and we'll talk again soon. Thanks.